Joining me on the line right now is one of the most exciting fighters in the world. He gets back in the ring this Friday at Madison Square Garden as he takes on Alex Duran. It is Turiano Johnson. Turiano, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm blessed, bro. You know, uh, I saw you on Twitter, uh, I would say about a month ago, maybe a little more than a month ago, and you were tweeting at Rock Nation saying, you guys should get me on this card. Uh, and I guess it's actually worked. All of your tweeting paid off. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, but uh, it, I must say, you know, my promoter, Gary Shaw, he saw it fit to uh, put me on the card, and, and that's what he did. That's my guy, there. Now, you've become, uh, you know, kind of a, a fan favorite on Twitter amongst uh, all the boxing writers and the fans who are on there. Did you ever anticipate that you were going to become as popular on Twitter as you've become? Well, you know, hey, it's the media world now, you know, so this is the way you're going to be able to communicate. And, you know, if I thought that I would have been this popular, not, not to the climax where I'm at now, but, hey, it is very interesting to see where this can go even further. And obviously, uh, a big part of why you're so popular is the fact that you've been you've been so exciting in the ring uh, throughout your career. Uh, tell me how training camp has gone thus far. It, it, how many weeks have you known about this fight? Have you been able to have a, a full camp in preparation for Theron? Oh yes, you know we had a full training camp for Alex Theron. Uh, hey, funny thing, he's sitting right in the front of me. Yeah, we we, we had a, a full training camp uh, preparing for him. So yeah, we 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 are well prepared for a fight come January 9th, Friday. Now everyone knows you uh, at least from the fights that most people have seen on television. Pressure fighter, but you spent a lot of years training in Cuba yeah. as well. And I saw in the Mike Gavronsky fight, and a lot of people would as well. You have the the capability of switching and and boxing a little bit as well. What were those years like when you were training in Cuba? Oh, indeed. You know, you're training among some of the most phenomenal and experienced and intelligent fighters in the world in Cuba. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it's a learning experience for me, you know, being there for nine years, up to the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Uh, I must tell you, you know, I'm not much of a technical fighter as the Cuban fighters are. I'm more of a puncher, but uh, I was able to learn a few of the boxing skills, which uh, I believe had contributed to my uh, 17 wins as far as a professional fighter. Uh, Cuban fighters are a very intelligent fighter. They they do a lot of boxing, not so much of um, the kind of boxing style that I do, but you know it only shows that I do have that in the background to be able to do, you know, a bit of boxing in the ring when the time is necessary. And, and I heard at the press conference uh, leading up to this card as well, you're mentioning that you're looking to use a little bit more head movement in this fight and maybe use some of those boxing skills. <laughs> are are those some of the adjustments that you're hoping to show on Friday night? Well, of course, you know, uh, I feel as though, you know, for this opponent here, you know, uh, I'm able to box against a guy like him. So these are the tools that I need, this is what I would use, and uh, boxing is one of the tools that would be needed to beat Alex around come Friday night. So, um, yes, I'm going to be using uh, what's necessary, such as a little bit of boxing, jabbing, moving my head, more slickness and more speed. Uh, my power, you know, that's inevitably right there. You know, that's what I do best. So the power is going to come naturally whenever I get the opportunity. But um, you're going to see a little bit more boxing because it is necessary to beat Alex with boxing. Now, I, I keep mentioning uh, how exciting you are in the ring and, and the fact that, uh, you know, at least the boxing media and the, and the people really inside boxing love to watch you fight. Um, and it's because of your style, uh, that pressure style that you bring in the ring. Do you think about trying to create an exciting fight when you set out when that bell rings, or is that just a product of how you fight? It was strange for you to even ask that question. Uh, well, to be honest, you know, as far as I say, that's just my natural nature, you know. I just like to fight. You know, I am a boxer, but first of all, I'm a boxing fan and a son of God. So uh, I go in that ring, you know, giving the fans what I would like to see as a fan. You know, I want excitement, but, you know, naturally, I'm just good at going in there to be a pressure fighter. I'm good at just letting my hands go. I, I don't mind taking a few blows. I know I have a knack for taking a few blows, but if you're not going to, if you're not going to knock me out, you're going to have a hell of a time inside that ring. Now, where did that style come from? You know, were there guys that you watched growing up that that kind of influenced you to fight the way that you do, or is is that something that happened naturally when you stepped in the gym? I would say, you know, it was something naturally, but not to be boastful. You know, I do have my idols and uh, fighters that I try to follow their trend. You know, such as the likes of Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Robinson, and. Uh, <clears throat> 
you know, and, and even Holyfield. But uh, Joe Frazier is, is my idol beyond all idols. So if I, if I were to compare myself, I'd compare myself between a Joe Frazier and a Marvin Hagler, you know, a pressure fighter, a fighter that comes inside. But I believe, honestly, you know, um, I do have a knack, you know, for, for just getting in there and, uh, and being a pressure fighter. But well, I would give credit to those uh, who were before me. Well, you were certainly involved in uh, one of the best fights of the year in uh, in 2014 against Cur- Curtis Stevens, and I, I know it's still, uh, you know, it, it's a sour point for you to even relive that fight, especially with the way that it ended, which uh, you know I didn't agree with, and I'm sure a lot of people out there uh, didn't either. Uh, did you take anything away from that fight? Was there anything that you you were able to take away from that aside from the fact that you felt that you got ripped off? Oh, well, indeed. You know, uh, every Every moment in the ring, whether you're fighting or you're training, you know, is a learning experience. And that was a learning moment for me. You know, yeah, there are a few things that I've learned in that fight that I can add and I can take away. You know, the fact that, you know, I did become very relaxed and very complacent at some time in the fight. You know, as that can never happen again. The fact that I could have used more boxing skills in the ring, that must start happening even more often now. So, yes, I've... I've learned to add and to take away, and, uh, and indeed, you know, it's only making me a better fighter, especially this come Friday, uh, January 9th at the Madison Square Garden. When you kind of, when you look back on that, um, you know, because I know you certainly don't agree with the fight, the fact that the fight was stopped, do you sort of view it as a victory? Because I think a lot of people, when they look back at that fight, um, you know, yes, Stevens walked away with the win, and he was able to, to get the fight with uh, with Hassan Endam out of it. I think a lot of people kind of viewed that as you getting the win over Curtis Stevens. Did, did you walk away with it feeling that way? Hey, you know, it's... It shows on my record that I, I lost to Curtis Stevens. Uh, ain't, ain't no change in that. You, you can't change it. So that that's the evidence in itself. Even for those who who saw the fight and who didn't see the fight, you know, they say, oh, well, sorry, I lost the fight. So and that's something I, I have to accept. If I feel that way, of course, you know, it's on my record. The, the most heartbreaking, most world-collapsing thing that ever took place in my life is when I was robbed. Uh, you know, robbery happens in sports on a regular, and uh, and I hate to even say to myself that I've been robbed, but that fight was a clear indication that it does take place in sports. Well, uh, you know, we've been talking about some of the changes uh, that you made and the, and the differences in this camp. And uh, the one thing that you pointed out in uh, another interview that you did is you said that you you upped your mileage. You, you did a little bit more running for this camp so that maybe, you know, you don't gas out towards the end of the fight. Uh, tell me what a, a, a typical day of training looks like for you and, uh, you know, how many miles are you putting in? What does a usual day of training look like? Well, uh, be that it is, you know, uh, no, uh, if you're referring to me gassing out, I don't think I had gassed out. No, definitely so, not. No. <laughs> but uh, indeed, you know, um, I did become relaxed at some time. But yes, of course, we picked up our mileage. You know, uh, we usually run a four-mile run uh, within a certain time limit. I can't disclose it right now because that's one of our secrets. But uh, <laughs> we have stepped up the, the, the timing off the run now. So and, uh, we have stepped up um, the, the strength training and uh, doing – some different types of calisthenics, uh, and uh, you know we have stepped up a whole lot of things uh, that were needed to, to be stepped up. I wish not to disclose everything, you know. Uh, that that right there is a is a brand right there for myself, you know. Uh, that that's something very necessary, and that's our secret weapons. Well, tell me if you can disclose this then. Uh, looking forward, uh, who is it that you want? I keep hearing you call out uh, Gennady Golovkin, and, and obviously that would be a fantastic fight for uh, for as long as it lasts on either end. Uh, is that the dream fight for you, assuming you win on Friday? The pinnacle of my career is to fight the best fighter in, in my division. And uh, in my eyes, Gennady Golovkin is the number one fighter. Be that it, it's not in any other's eye, I believe he is. I believe he's the, the number one fighter, and of course, you know, champions ought to fight champions. Gone out of days when you get to see that opportunity. Well, hopefully the world will see that, you know, Toriano is worthy enough to fight Gandhi Golovkin's, and that's where you would see champions fight champions. Unlike the Peter Quill who runs away from Matt Karabov and other fighters, you're going to see Toriano take up the opportunity. Yes, I'm a champion. I won fight Golovkin's, and I'm not like any other fighter who just want to step in the ring, you know, just get an opportunity to fight with the great. I know I am the one to beat Golovkin. Most certainly I am. Well, we can't wait to see you back in the ring uh, on Friday. There's going to be a lot of eyes uh, on this card. Congratulations on getting this opportunity, and best of luck on Friday.
Oh, thank you so much. And please, you know, for everybody out there who's watching, uh, continue to pray uh, to keep me in good health along with my family. And, hey, come Friday night at the Madison Square Garden. Please stay tuned because it's going to be an exciting fight, you know, displayed all by Toriano Johnson going up against Alex Serrano. All right, man. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, God bless you. Take care. Take care.